name is Ajit, and on behalf of Botminds and UBS Forums, I welcome you all for this exclusive virtual webinar on Has RPA Failed Your Document Process Automation? Time to use an AI-first platform. First of all, thank you very much for sparing your time and joining us for today's session. I hope you all are doing well and staying safe with your families. So before we start, a few guidelines I would like to make you people aware of. This webinar is happening on Zoom platform and this session is being recorded. We will take your questions in the Q&A session at the end of this webinar. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, queries, feel free to post the same in Q&A box or you can use hand raise option. Okay, so let's get started. Modern enterprises comprise both simple and complex processes. While RPA has helped enterprises automate simple routine work, it has failed in automating workflows that require a certain level of understanding and decision-making. Installing hundreds of bots every, uh, for every activity has only turned out to be a complex and costlier than enterprise had imagined. Given the accelerating pace, at which automation technologies are evolving, it is important that enterprise look beyond RPA and stay digitally competent. Adopting an AI-first platform for automating business critical workflows, such as document processing, automation, automation drastically evaluates business value and offers competitive advantages. By leveraging AI, enterprises can attain true automation by augmenting decision-making and combining speed with intelligence. In today's webinar, we will explore the best strategies to transform the business process by leveraging the true potential of RPA and AI in document processing. So to set up the context and uh, take this discussion forward, let me invite our keynote speaker for the day, Ms. Poonam Masan, who is the Director of Transformation Services for Digital Finance Transformation and Strategy at GenPact. Giving a brief, Poonam is a digital transformation expert and has delivered business processes process improvements and digital transformation change globally for multiple clients. She has well versed in digital tools like RPA, business intelligence, ERP implementation, and AI tools. She is experienced in managing strategic initiatives end-to-end, -end, setting up shared service centers, simplifying end-to-end -end customer journeys by implementing change, designing optimal operation, operating models, and centralization and transformation. She has been a speaker and panelist at many transformation events, and she is leading mentor to companies. With that note, Poonam, over to you to start with your keynote session. Thank you, Ajit. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I would like to take a couple of minutes to give you a background of uh, uh, you know, where we are in the digital transformation journey and how we are um, making uh, you know, the we are, we are going or are experiencing the new normal. So uh, let me just give you a brief background. Then I have a couple of slides I would want to share. So we are currently in a world of uncertainty and turbulence and businesses are moving towards technologies and digital practices. Uh, so what is that going to do? That is going to help them cope with present challenges and also help them absorb any future shocks which the changing environment brings. So the new normal has created avenues for organizations to come together and leverage technologies to connect and collaborate with their workforce. And the digital transformation is not for just improving the business performance, but for improving our lives, the customer experience, the employee experience as well. So in, in the post COVID era uh, or should we say, you know, the COVID era is still there, but we are trying to adapt ourselves to the, um, you know, the new normal or the way things have been panning out. What we, what are we looking to do? We want to be creative, agile, flexible, and at the same time, uh, be compassionate, augment human technologies and capabilities and business scope. So how can we do that? So adoption, implementation, and deployment of RPA along with intelligent automation will turn out to be a very competitive differentiator and will go a long way in building the trust and loyalty as the delighted customers are often the branded ambassadors for any company. And, and we've been experiencing it. 
uh, we've kind of changed our business style. So, um, you know, how, how uh, the companies today are uh, experiencing, uh, you know, the new normal. Everybody is working from home. People are not meeting clients face to face. I mean, they're just meeting clients virtually. So how is this all happening? How are we able to really connect the dots and digitally transform the enterprise? So we'll, we'll get to it in a few minutes. So automation technology is bound to progress and then we'll be in a right position to adopt and recalibrate it to further advancements. So any questions, anything which you would want to uh, know at this point of time, I am just going to share my screen with you a minute. So how can we accelerate business performance by leveraging the true potential of RP and AI in the new normal? So the new normal uh, is to ad adapt, rise, and thrive. So how, how do we adapt to the new normal? So we are doing our own crisis management where we have a BCP response, we have rapid response teams, we have transformation offices, we speak to the clients, we handled, handle their processes virtually, and we've made sure that all our processes go unhindered. There are no, uh, no uh, casualties or there is no issue which comes in the operations, though everybody works from home. We have assured that the data security uh, is totally um, there and, and we've been able to handle it well. And how, how do we rise to the equation? So we, uh, there are actions which we are, uh, the companies today are doing, which uh, brings a lot of resilience and adaptability. So supply chain visibility and resilience, um, customer, how to uh, drive uh, cyber security, top line security, data security, and how to gain customer trust in this scenario and how to accelerate the digital, uh, the digital processes. And how do we thrive? So we've talked about adaptation and working in the new normal, but how do we thrive? How do we go above and beyond? So we've, the companies now are more and more moving towards cloud. We need to rethink organization and people in the new normal. And uh, what we need to do is to digitize and, and look at the processes end to end rather than looking in silos. Or, you know, we need to look at all the processes from start to beginning. And it somewhere it starts with your, uh, you know, uh, online mode, your digital commerce. And, and your sales, logistics, how, and how do we um, how do we talk to clients? Everything. So it's a whole whole experience which is embedded in the uh, digital automation. And how do we handle the virtualization? And how do we redefine the new normal? So AI and AI has a uh, symbiotic relationship with RPA to create newer avenues to accelerate the process of digital transformation and business process automation. So we need to be future ready, accelerate our digital transformation. So what we thought we would be probably doing five years down the line uh, or more, we have actually this COVID era has uh, kind of made that uh, point come very near. And what we would have wanted to do after five years, we are actually doing now. So this virtualization, they're moving uh, and, and creating, you know, virtual offices, vir using virtual talent is, was probably an office of the future. But, you know, because of this pandemic, it's, it's kind of a silver lining in this pandemic that we've been able to utilize talent across and, you know, uh, adapt ourselves. And there are, there are organizations which weren't even thinking of automation for the next five, 10 years, or maybe, you know, um, around five, four, three to five years. But now because of this scenario, they are, they are wanting to do it now. So, you know, we've seen a lot of changes. We've, we've tried to move towards customer centric intelligence solutions, so something which the customer will be happy with and um, predictive analytics, forecasting, something which, um, you know, digital transformation, RPA analytics will be able to provide um, machine learning, how can we demand, how can we forecast the demand, supply chain, everything. So uh, the, the need of the R is to understand what the customer wants 
or what we can give to the customer, something more than what the customer wants and, and create a demand for it. And intelligent decision making. So as I said, you know, there'll be a host of analytical platforms, there'll be a machine learning platform, there will be artificial intelligence. And how, how do I make decisions on top of for that, looking at that? And an impressive customer experience. Uh, if I continue to use RPA and AI, I uh, you know I can use it in finance. I can use it in customer services. I can use it use it in MDM. Any number of uh, processes and uh, horizontals where you know I am going to get productivities. So, as you see the bottom uh, line that uh, we we've got a eighty percent reduction in cost, 55% improvement in quality, and a similar increase in productivity and capabilities of robots. So uh, this is this is a study which McKenzie has done, and it is it's a true study. So, you know, we, we can see that there is so much of a cost and time benefit utilizing RPA and ML. So the business goals have really shifted uh, and uh, what we're trying to do is to improve the customer experience, improve our cash flow, drive revenue growth, product excellence, cut costs, manage talent as well. And how do we do that? By employing automation, by employing RPA and artificial intelligence as well. So we slowly, uh, we are you know, moving to that age where we could um, you know, be in a digitized environment and we can manage talent in that we have to reskill, retrain our talent to really handle that. <clears throat> and and how, how do we transform the uh, existing operating model to support adoption is through use of uh, AI, more and more AI, and how do I integrate AI with complementary technologies like cloud, business intelligence, RPA, and other data sets. So this is the base of how a company organization plans it, uh, its AI strategy. And there will be a lot of uh, human and AI collaboration at its best, um, which comes in this, uh, in this age and you know, doing a digital transformation for a organization. <clears throat> so uh, as I uh, mentioned before, uh, why do we need to do digital transformation is to give a better customer experience, increase the employee efficiency, and you could redeploy the effort which is reduced for from using the IT, the AI and RPA tools uh, to put them on you know, better jobs, not the manual rework or uh, you know, repeatable jobs. So uh, as, as we see that uh, 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 there is a limiting human interaction in the lower uh, the low, lower part of a process and instead the uh, employee moves on to analytical and insight driven process <clears throat> okay uh, yeah coming to uh, you know uh, the difference between rpa and uh, intelligent automation um, this is uh, any questions any anything which anybody wants to come up with uh, punam there are no questions on q and a um, you can complete your session and we can pick up the questions at the end. Okay, so um, let me take uh, a couple of minutes and take you through the RPA criteria for shortlisting the uh, use cases. So where do we use RPA? RPA we use for standardized structured data, labor intensive um, data, which is, which and, and uh, you know, where we need uh, simple rules and logic, nothing very, uh, complex um, and where, where there's a lot of fluctuation in demand. So these type of processes are good candidates for RPA, where you, you probably have to pick up data from an Excel file, uh, you know, put some, uh, put some uh, rules in it and then get the desired data. But this all is basis our structured data as we increase our need to automate beyond structured data we need to look beyond RPA. So there, that is where intelligent automation helps us to work with unstructured data. So we utilize AI and ML, NLP to really work on the unstructured data part. And that is where you know, document processing automation also comes in. 
and that is where i would want to pro, uh, pass this on to the next speaker to take it forward and share with us uh, on uh, what by, what binds could do and how it is going to help us for the unstructured data thank you and thanks vikas over to you thank you punam thank you punam thank you very much for lovely session participants if you have any questions queries feel free to post the same in q and a box or you can also use your hand raise option and we will give you access to unmute yourself and ask the question directly so with that we will move ahead with the next session okay so for the same i would like to invite our speakers mr gokul ganapati who is the co-founder and ceo at botmines giving a brief with 12 years of experience mainly into enterprise applications and product development now fascinated towards converting unstructured data into structured knowledge and further towards actionable insights along with him we have mr vikas anand vice president sales and marketing and head of growth at botmines vikas has 22 plus years of industry experience and has worked with companies like hcl infosys and blue prism he has spent 18 years in outsourcing consulting and sales with global clients the last 5 years vikas has been with rpn ai intelligent automation industry helping organizations in their digital transformation journey in identifying the right tools sets to solve their business challenges with that note vikas over to you to take this forward thank you ajit uh, can you hear me okay yes all right awesome perfect um thanks everyone for taking out time um there's an extended weekend for almost everybody so this is literally the friday so thanks to, thanks for taking out time on that and uh, punam thanks for your session to kick things off you know as a keynote speaker you have set it up very well uh, specifying where uh, the direction in terms of the automation and ai you know we are heading uh, and what are the things that rpa is good for what are the things that rpa can and cannot do i think that's a very good point so thanks for setting that up uh what i'm going to do is uh, use the next 20 25 minutes to at least talk about what is it that we give as part of our platform what are the different ways in which you can solve uh the document related problem or document related challenges and why basically an rpa plus ocr is not the way to go ahead and solve your idp uh you know challenges or idp requirements okay so we are in uh, we are a idp platform uh, we are an ai first platform which is specifically built for business uh, what that really means is that you don't really have to be a rpa developer to use botmines ai platform you can basically be a business user a subject matter expert and you will have the ability to create ai models at the end of the platform at the end of the business process that you want to go ahead and put that to and we look at a combination of speed and intelligence as the automation what that really means is that uh it's not just rpa because rpa is good when it comes down to pure play automation handling extremely complex processes where the data is structured the information is very well defined and the output needs to be done but it's time consuming for users to go ahead and deal with multiple applications and that's been fantastic so far uh but the requirements have kind of moved on as well um these scope of the automation has kind of expanded in the last uh you know couple of years and from structured information it has come down to invoices documents contracts uh you know medical reports transcriptions and so on and so forth and that's where the scope of rpa kind of expanded into an ipa and so on and so forth there so a way to look at the entire automation kind of needs to be a slightly different approach there just looking at a simple based automation you know is not enough uh you know from rpa we got an ai combination of course a lot of players or almost all the players have an ai element around that uh but handling an unstructured data needs a different kind of an approach you can't really go ahead with a rule defined approach to a certain extent you need to look at it from a uh, natural language processing machine learning and you know other models specifically and that's where we come into play as botmines so we are an ai first platform and we do have an rpa capability around that and just to be very very clear in terms of where we sit in and into the entire landscape if you already have an rpa implementation you know of any platform we are very happy to sit alongside you know go ahead and give you the information handle documents and extract the information and give it to the current rpa so the rpa investment is utilized at the same time if you do not have any automation investment botmines can go ahead and look at the entire piece end to end So if I take a step back and say what is the problem that we are actually solving the problem really is that 
now more and more doc more and more insights are really stuck in documents gartner predicts that roughly 80 percent of the enterprise data is unstructured and you know rpa has been a very very big influencer to getting the automation off the ground but it has been playing majorly within that 20 percent you know frame and anytime anybody has tried to kind of go ahead and do the automation of the of a particular document it needs a couple of hops and all of you who are practitioners on the on the webinar today would probably concur with that you need two or three different technologies to work together uh, sometimes it's it's okay but anytime you go out of the very standard path that becomes very very fragile uh, anytime a template changes or a process changes at the back you really have to go and fix that entire uh, you know the process that you've kind of put in place um, then you're talking about number three, which is where you've got the bots. Bots are essentially picking up the information. You need the intelligence, which is sitting outside. Most of the things are currently rule-driven when you are looking at the current solutions that are available around it. And you know, you're looking at a lot of time that is consumed in terms of putting the process together. Sure, you can make things work and do those certain activities. And if your requirement is fairly small, you're only handling 10, 20, 30 documents a day or a couple of hundred documents uh, you know, uh, a month or a year. Sure, that, that may work. But if you're literally handling 1,000 page documents you know, for your customers or 100 page documents, which are linked, which the format keeps changing, you need to look at it as a different kind of solution. You need to look at from the IDP standpoint. Where BotMinds comes in are these three pillars of our absolute you know, work that we perform. Number one, we understand all types of documents. So you need an IDP platform that understands all types of documents and also is independent of template because if you still have to go ahead and train for every single template, that becomes literally impractical and you have to spend you know, development hours time to go ahead and train for a specific platform. And that becomes challenging if you're template driven. And the scope of course is also reduced there because you're then dependent upon how many templates are available, what template is kind of, uh, you know, um, has been trained and then you need to go ahead and train on the other pieces there. The second important piece for us is that we want to make sure that the AI platform is available to everyone. You don't specifically need to have an, you know, data scientist or AI engineers to only deal because you're not really writing any Python codes here. You're not really picking up raw open source AI models and trying to get some data, you know, through. But if that's your requirement, you can still use a platform like BotMinds to go ahead and get the, sam the data output fairly fast. And all of that can still be done with just a point and click. You know scenario and why that is important is because now business runs at a different speed as compared to technology technologies it takes a very long time uh you know because that's how it needs to be you know doing when they integrate the applications when the different systems are integrated it needs to wet through quite a few things but once technology has done that integration business should be able to take over do whatever needs to the business needs to get done uh response time is needs to be fairly fast there the third piece here, a uh, third pillar in our overall uh, you know, point here is that we don't need a lot of data. You only need to specify 100 or so examples uh, for a particular training. And what we mean by 100 examples is that let's say you're looking at contracts you need, or let's say you're looking at a financial document. Uh, that financial document comes from a variety of different industries. Uh, there's a transport industry, there's a travel and tourism industry. You got a financial services coming through, a bank is there, insurance is there. Et cetera, et cetera, retail, you know, CPG, everybody has annual reports, financial documents, but they all write different languages. They all may have different criteria that they specify, a different way in which they say that, yes, we are successful, this is what we are measuring. So those are the things that you club in together and you put into a bundle of 100 examples. You don't have to give 100 for each of them, 100 examples overall. And then you have the ability to build your own custom AI models using BotMinds. And all of that essentially can be done in just a few weeks. You can get uh, a you know, POC done with us within about a week, week and a half. Uh, that allows you to just get the documents, give us a couple of documents, or do it yourself. You know, Use a couple of documents and then get the output done. Or get the first level phase one ready in just about three to four weeks time. And all of this gets done in four specific phases. Number one, you ingest the document. And that ingestion, you could either do it manually if it is required. You could point our platform to a particular source and say, pick up the information from this email, from this web page, from this folder, from this cloud location. It doesn't matter. Whatever that, in, that location is, we'll go ahead and pick up the information from there. Second piece is understanding. That understanding natively comes as part of our platform. 
So we have multiple AI models running behind the scenes. So document AI, table AI, text AI, um, you know, form AI, and we're also now working on graph AI. Uh, what these you know different terms essentially mean is that if you upload a document, how does a document how, how, what is the layout of the document? You've got multiple pages. Where does the page begin? Where does the page you know, end? Where is the paragraph? What is the section? Where is the highlight? If it is bold, it means something. If it is a bigger font, it means something else. If there's an image and there's a text written under the image. So all the nuances that we, you know, as human beings, when we read a document, we know the importance on how to read the document, that how part is what is captured as part of our document AI. Same thing goes with table as well, and I'll talk about that when I show you some examples, you know, in a minute. So that's the that's the understanding capability, which is there natively available as part of our platform. Then we go ahead and train. So this is what we provide the training. So you gave us, you know, a couple of documents to Botminds platform. Those documents found uh, become the foundation of the training. That training essentially is done as a one-time activity. You train using those hundred documents, and then you tell. And this is I, if I have to draw a parallel here, this is very similar to a new employee joining your organization and you specify and say, you know what, hey, you're already a financial analyst, you're already an underwriter, you're already a subject matter expert, but you have moved from company A to company B. In this company, which is company B, here is the process that we have to follow. This is the information that you need to extract. This is the person that you need to provide the information to and so on and so forth. That's the training piece that you provide. It's a one-time activity. Then comes the. Uh, sorry, because if I have to, yeah. Yeah, because there's a specific question around this. Uh, Arvind asked, how will it, I mean, how will it work for different domains? Do I need to do anything? So, uh, this is exactly what uh, uh, Vikas is talking about, right? The training part, specific to domain, you can, you know, uh, you can you can teach our system that understands and, you know, you can create a domain specific model. So, uh, I just wanted to interrupt because. Cosines, you know, you have a lot of questions. Please post it in uh, Q&A and we'll take it up uh, side by side while Vikas is uh, uh, covering that point. Go ahead, Vikas. Sorry for the introduction. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so in terms of the extraction, you can define where the output needs to be. So you can clearly specify that I'm sending this large PDF document as the input. And the output is where I'm looking at. I'm looking at a structured output. I need it into a Excel format or a CSV, TSV format or JSON format. Uh, but I, I want to give it to my, my APIs. Uh, that's how I want to consume it. Or I want it to be posted in my SAP. Go ahead and do that or any other application at the back, or, hey, I'm already using people. I've got 25 people extracting information from financial reports. If I use this platform and I have the secondary piece, which is already running with an RPA because the people convert the unstructured to structured, then my RPA kicks in. Can that happen? Absolutely. The extraction information can, can be handed over to the RPA and your RPA could continue. But if you don't have an RPA implementation, we'll go ahead and do end-to-end -end for you. And we are a horizontal platform, so we don't really typically have, we, we don't really offer a pre-made solution in terms of underwriting, in terms of portfolio analysis, invoice extraction, which is what a single solution, you know, typically are, are available. Now, that if that's all that your requirement, maybe single solution is the way to go. But the moment and, and what, what I've seen in my, you know, my interaction with the clients across, you know, over the years is that typically the requirement comes from one side of the organization, which is financial organization, maybe let's say invoice. But the moment invoice extraction comes out and you have the you know, benefit coming in, a different department, different team comes and says, that's amazing. Can I get that technology as well? Unfortunately, the answer there is no, because that's just an invoice solution. So that is where my recommendation is that you look at a platform that can do more than just one thing rather than a point solution. That's where BotMind's platform essentially comes into play. And here are some of the things that we have done. So ability, as long as it's a document, we have the ability to go ahead and extract the information from there. It does not matter what that document, which um, industry or a function that document belongs to. There are certain bit of already pre-made models which are available, which if you have annual reports, as an example, we can give you a very good head start to say, you know, we've done tons of annual report extraction. You get a good head start there. If you've got invoices, we can give you a head start there. But the point is that you have the ability to create one solution and then create multiple other solutions using a singular platform itself. So with this, I'm going to get into a couple of uh, feature demos here. And I've broken this down into two separate sections. One is a feature demo, and then I have a full-fledged 
uh, demo that I will take you onto the platform. And by the end of this conversation, I will also invite you uh, to register for a BotMinds workshop. Uh, I'll talk about that uh, you know, in, in a bit more time towards the end, but that's something that is, that is coming a little later. So very first thing in terms of our table extraction, what you see here is this is our platform. This platform runs, it's a SaaS-based SAS platform. Uh, we have two sections here. Uh, those of you who have done any kind of an OCR, you probably would be familiar with this layout. We've got a source document on the left-hand side and we've got the extraction on the right-hand side. This extraction is what you specify as in men that you specifically want. And you can say that, you know, you've got this net income, you've got this net sales, you specify all of these specific activities or, uh, you know, information fields, attributes that you want to extract. And then we go ahead and train on the basis of that. Uh, as you can see that any point of time I'm interacting with this document, you have the ability to see where the information was really extracted from. Uh, other thing that I would show you here is that if you look at net income, we've got a value of negative 588, uh, whereas the value written over here is profit loss for the year. What I'm trying to demonstrate with that is that we are not looking for a search term and then we are finding that information anywhere in the document and we're giving you relevant information there. What we are doing really is that we are using the training that you have provided or training that we provided at the very initial stage and we use the NLP engine at the back to go ahead and pick up anything else that is relevant. Uh, like an example that I gave, if we have aviation industry, they may be talking about the seat capacity, right? If you've got a telecom industry, they may be talking about the ARPU, right? So. All of these, these scenarios may be different, but they are at the financial language point. They may be just talking about one specific KRA or a KPI, and we have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. I spoke very briefly about a table AI, and this is what is there uh, you know, as a demonstration. So if you look at current assets, you know, we are giving you the information of current asset is 4495. What you, know, you have done or what we have done, I keep saying you and I, because you have the ability to train by yourself. You know, When we set this up for you, you don't really need uh, you know, any engineering capacity from, from any side. What I mean by that is that to train, all you specify is I'm extracting information written here, which is current assets. And I need the value, which is written here is 4495. And that's it. That's all that you specify to bot mines. Everything else is taken care of by our table AI. What is that everything else? That there are these two columns, 2019, 2018, 2019 being the latest year, regardless of whatever year we are currently in. This needs to come from a balance sheet. It is not going to come from an income statement or a cash flow statement. The current asset will be always written in a balance sheet. The current asset is a heading. Uh, 4495 is a subtotal. There could be four, five, seven, 15 different line items here. Does not really matter. Our table AI automatically understands that. If you're dealing with different geographies like Middle East, the number of year, the years are written the other way around. So you got the latest most year on the right hand side, and then you got the oldest year on the left hand side. All these nuances are by default understood by our platform. And anytime anything changes in these financial reports, you don't have to sit down and train bot mines all over again. All those things are basically addressed based on the initial level training that we have provided. And it's not just the tables. We can also extract information from anywhere in the document. This is a 10K filing where we are extracting information from the notes. The notes really are some bits of information as a commentary, which is written somewhere in the document. And the information could be anywhere. This is a 100 page document and the information is you know, on page number 10, 20, 60, 40, does not matter. We can go ahead and extract the information from there as well. And once you have done the extraction, the information is then available to you in a structured format. So these are a variety of formats that are available to you out of the box. And this is our by default uh, template or a structure that's available from a structured output format. And this is my demonstration here is a one-on-one. -on -one. You can do this on bulk as well, or it could be a completely headless output. So what you've got from a hundred page document, you've got this information that you typically needed to extract, takes about a couple of minutes or half an hour or one hour for you to do that. You may be doing find and replace or maybe doing rule-based extraction. We can do that in near real time and you get the extracted value pulled out over here. And like the, there are a couple of other examples and I'm gonna, you know, be a little fast over here, but I want to talk about these because these are important things. 
if you have a large document, this example is a call transcript, which is completely unstructured. This is somebody going ahead and announcing the capability of, or, or not the capability, the announcing the results for a particular quarter or for a particular year. So we talk about from the very beginning, you know, any acquisition happened, who acquired who, how many participants, any COVID related impact, any change in the percentage, did you increase your revenue, decrease the revenue? Um, in here, this is interesting on a 13 person hire. So we trained our platform to pick up the percentage. Now, randomly, I could say just 13% would be enough. But if somebody is actually doing from a subject matter expertise perspective, 13% what? Higher, lower, higher is the right value. And our platform, after we have trained that, predicted one more piece saying that a 13% higher than prior year. For some, you may say, oh, that's pretty obvious. But I would just say from an intelligence standpoint, our model thought that, you know, hey, you needed more information than just higher, and it's predicted that information for you. Now you've got two of these options, and you can then give a feedback using these buttons here to say which one would you prefer going forward, and our platform will learn. And like I mentioned, the COVID-related impacts, we also do sentiment analysis, uh, where we are giving you the information about positive impact, negative impact, and the end result typically for something like this would be the fact that you basically need an executive summary at the end. You don't need this output. The output was to be able to build the executive summary. And that's something that we can build as well. We can create a synthetic summary based on certain information that you provide. Uh, we don't generate it. We just stitch it together and give that to you. And typically what happens when you are sending this information out, if you're doing from an insurance perspective with the underwriter, if you're doing review uh, and you're extracting some piece of information from a contract for a legal review, Typically what would happen is you will send the information out um, and the person would say, you know what, this is good, but I need more context around that. Uh, what I'm demonstrating here is a PDF extraction capability. And you would remember my 13 person higher example that I had shared. So let's say this is a legal contract and you got this information and, uh, and a legal reviewer says, you know, this is all good, but I need context around it. So typically the entire search activity needs to begin from scratch yet again to be able to find this information and give that context of where that information really was. But with BotMind's deep linking capability, anybody who has this PDF, which has been sent through emails, et cetera, et cetera, can click on that deep link. You'll get that document, that page, that paragraph, that line, and say, that's where I got this information from. So a context to information essentially is never lost. You have that information kind of available to you and the reference that is available. So with this, I'll show you one interesting use case that, uh, you know, to make sure that things don't break down, I've got a video over here. Um, I see a lot of questions coming through. I see people raising hands. Allow me to finish this. We have a Q&A section and, you know, I'll go ahead and address those questions there as well. Um, so within the financial extraction, uh, as an example, typically what would happen is that you would have a lot of types of documents that are coming through here. So you're somebody's gone on. Okay, so this is my audio that is running. Allow me to move it. Yeah. So in here, you got a lot of documents that are coming through. Let's say with the IBM example, here you need to extract the financial information and we've got investor presentation. We've got a 10Q report, got an earning call report and we've got a press release. So when you're doing your research, you know, uh, financial research or you want to extract the information, Typically you'll have all these documents and then you need to collate, confirm, and bring all this information out and put it together into a singular document. And that's something that I'm trying to demonstrate you know, with this example here. So if I open up the first document, the layout on the left and right, you're familiar with that. We have a source document that loads up here and then we have the result that shows up on the right hand side. And once the result comes through, you would see that every information that is required, these are the four documents that have been loaded up. We call this as a document set, but the information is loaded over here. It's a 350 page document, uh, fairly large. We got this basic information, company details, year end details, et cetera, et cetera. You would see this bubble that is showing up here every time I move this uh, in my mouse. And that is referring to the document from where we have extracted this information essentially telling you that you don't have to go between two documents. Now, this number of employees happens to be in the investor presentation and not in the 10Q filing or the annual report. Then we are looking at outstanding, which happens to be in the 10K document. So it goes to that document. So you can navigate between multiple documents, but the summary that you're getting here is a summary of all the documents, wherever the information is, while you had given the training, we consolidate all of that information and bring that out to you in a singular way. 
So all the things that I showed you, the unstructured documents, the table understanding, the notes understanding, the ability to read, scan documents, et cetera, et cetera, they're all uh, you know, put together in this specific use case and they're available as an example here. So here talking about different partnerships, which are there, what are the revenue details, which one has the highest revenue, which is the other in the last quarter that is available. So we got all of that information extracted in a singular way. The revenue details coming in from the profit and loss highlights, specifically in an investor presentation, you now have an ability to go ahead and collect as well. So what I've done here is I've taken the billions and I've made it into a billion. And that's a feedback that I've given here. And that correction is going back as a learning to this platform. So you would see that the moment it tick marks, that's the learning that has gone in. And then you extract more information. You can keep providing the feedback and you, know, you can keep uh, giving the feedback and doing the correction as and when that may be required. So you got auditors here, acquisition detail, and then you have a summary at the back. And this is the summary that I spoke about during the core transcript that we have the ability to put the summary together, depending upon the scenario that you need or the, the areas that you want us to extract, we can get that extraction out to you here. Um, I think I will be running, and here you go, here are the four different five of, uh, you know, points of summary that needed to be kind of extracted, and we'll pull that out. And I think I'll be running a bit more of you know, extracted output as well. I wanna quickly go and show you that extraction. So let's take, okay, so here we are. Now at this point, I'm doing the, the PDF extraction and you would remember I had done a correction from a billions to a billion as a feedback. And that feedback has gone in and has been settled you know, over here. And that's the extraction that is available to you. Again, deep linking works. You go ahead and click on this piece of your link. It will be taking you to the actual document set, to the specific document, to the value to the page, and show you that you know this is where I essentially extracted the information from. There you go. So it's picked up this 40.4 billion. That's the value where I where it was extracted from. So it is giving you that reference there. So with this, I'll show you one case study. Uh, that's a standard case study, which we recently got an ISG award for that. Uh, and this is a tender risk analysis where we were able to reduce a five day turnaround time to a five hour. And what we are doing here is we are handling thousand page documents, multiple documents, multiple attachments. Um, and the requirement really was that RFPs come through. There are a lot of people who are sitting down, reviewing those documents, finding the risk, finding what are the challenges, finding and highlighting uh, the key important points there, uh, and then bringing that out and referencing to multiple documents was also a requirement there. So what we were able to give them is we were able to give them our platform, configure it, configure an AI model, give them the risk scores, give them a side-by-side -side comparison with the original document, with the extraction time. And with that, we enabled them to reduce the bidding time by 80%, reduce the overall turnaround time, including human in the loop from a five-day to a five hour. So five hours is including human and loop. So you get the output, then you want to sanitize that, you want to handle it to a certain extent and then move that forward. That's something that we were able to do with them. Like that, there is a invoice example as well, uh, you know, in terms of our use case and a case study. This is where we're getting multiple types of invoices that range to about two pages to 25 pages and a lot of complication, nested tables, group headings, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And they roughly had a lot of people working. I think they had about uh, 150 plus uh, people working and you know doing that on an offshore basis. Um, and they had about like 49 types of documents uh, and you know multiple fields that they'd given us to, to look at and build the solution for. Um, so our very first pass that we gave back to them we literally gave out an 83% you know, accuracy. And then the starting point, that's where we are. We roughly are able to deliver a 75% accuracy on a very first pass. Uh, by first pass, I mean the 100 documents, the very first training. Then we go back to the client and say, you know what, we have done this activity. Do you think everything is okay? That typically is at a 75% starting point. Once the SMEs have given a feedback there and the second loop comes through and then we create a new AI model on that, that accuracy continues to improve sometimes with a jump of about five to 10%. And in certain cases, we have also seen a jump by about 15 to 20%. It all depends upon the examples given and the quality of data that has been pushed out. So with that, I'll show you some examples, but I think it's a good time to start taking questions and then I can start picking up uh, the you know exact examples over there. So I'll open Q&A. Gokul, do you wanna come online and tell me if there is a specific question that I can address? 
Yeah. Okay. I think uh, first question, maybe Ruchi, if you want to unmute yourself, you want to ask uh, a good question to start with, which I already because covered, but we can add more color. Yeah, Ajit, could you could you unmute Ruchi Jan and then one by one we'll go on the QA. Uh, everyone, we're looking at the QA session because that allows us to make sure that we are all answering one question and we have moved on without missing out on anything. So if you have any question that you've written on the chat, if you could just put that on the Q&A, that'll be extremely helpful. Uh, so Hello. Ajit, if you see, hi Ruchi, yes. go ahead please. Hey, hi. So uh, basically I'm new to this uh, RPA and all this. So I have used a uh, UI path. So we yep. just need to create some of the bot and process flows. Hmm. So just needed to understand that how bot minds is different from UI path or automation anywhere. Sure. So, yeah. Sure. Do you want to add something else Ruchi, to your question? Uh, somewhat what I understand from uh, the whole conversation that you shared is that the bot minds uh, provide some of the templates. So you can, if you can brief on that also, that can be sure. helpful. Will do, will do. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, so first thing, you know, we, we are not an RPA platform. We are an AI first platform. That's where we differ majorly on with other RPA players. Typically, most of the RPA players started as an RPA. Now they are mostly IPA players, and that's your AI integration. And the AI integration typically comes with the uh, extension of the marketplace where you could go ahead and get a specific component like Abby, like a couple of other specific components which are built in. And those components can be put together with UiPath bots and you know other components that you have to make sure that you're able to then um, extract the information that is there. We don't, we don't have bots. That's the first thing. We don't typically just do RPA. We only look at documents. So if you've got a document related challenge or a process, that's where we come in. But if you had, uh, let's say an MIS report generation challenge where you got information you know, that is written in a particular Excel file and seven Excel files that come from seven different regions across the globe, and you must consolidate them and bring it into a singular Excel file, that's a very typical RPA use case. And that's well done by UiPath and Automation Anywhere and others. Where we come into play is if those reports are coming to you in a document, by document, I mean scan document or a Word document that is not really easily converted to an Excel or a process uh, you know, structured format that I would say, that's where we come in. We can look at all of that information, give you an Excel or any other output so you can do the further processing there. Okay, I got it. Yep. Thanks, right. Richie. We can take the question from Sesadri because it, that's continuation of the same point. Yeah. Uh, Sesadri, you may un, you can unmute and you can talk or I can read it. Yeah. All right. Can I audible? Yep. Yes, Sesadri, go ahead. Hey, I, I work for ILG. Um, so what what uh, uh, question is, if I were to use an RPA, um, so let me put it this way. We use RPA for many other reasons. One mm -hmm. such is to collate the documents and then try to look at those things. Is this something that can work side in, uh, along with an RPA? Uh, if so, how do you integrate it? I, sure. I do hear your point. You just said um, uh, yeah. it is a pure play uh, document uh, related. But if I were to use it, is there an option at all? Absolutely. Thanks for the question, Shadri. Um, So the simple answer is yes. Uh, and that's what I, you know, uh, had mentioned, and I continue to, you know, uh, bring that out. We are not trying to replace your existing RPA investment, uh, but if you're doing documents, you know, just documents which RPA is not basically fit to handle, have bot minds handle those documents. We have the extraction, and we'll hand over the extraction to your existing RPA setup. And then your rest of the process can continue to run smoothly because you already have that handled with the RPA bots and RPA setup. So we, have, we can very well sit alongside any of your RPA there and continue to hand off the information to the RPA. So the answer is yes. Okay. okay. Uh, since uh, Mr. Sadri mentioned ISG, I'll need to cover that web scenario also. So ISG research, you want to process a lot of, let's say, yeah. uh, web, web pages. Yes, we have capability. We can monitor website source. We can bring those web pages in. We can you know understand. Mm -hmm. We can extract, and then we can you know structure in the way your current RPA deployment can uh, handle. Yeah, yeah, that's end to end we can do. Sure, sure. All right. Yeah, I have I have a follow up for one more question below. If you want me to answer, ask that please. I can ask that. Otherwise, I can Go wait ahead. for you. To call. Go ahead. Please. Yeah. So, so you did mention about uh, getting the uh, reading the data from the document and then moving it wherever you're moving it. 
yeah quite often the invoices are having a lot of handwritten uh, text yeah. right uh, i just want to see how you would uh, manage that sure sure so handwritten capability is something that we are building right now what we do is we handle uh block block letter handwritten so if you got forms that are coming through and you've got block letters written over there we can very well recognize that that's not a problem at all but a cursive written, writing capability is something that we are you know putting together we released mm -hmm. our v11 in june and we are v12 is just around the corner i think in another month and a half and we expect two things two major things to be released as part of that v12 one is the first level of handwritten recognition and the second is a graph ai that are very briefly touched upon and graph ai we are we are building so that we can read engineering documents you can read the stuff that is written around there stuff that is drawn beyond the beyond the normal simple charts that we get so these are two things that we are working on right. thank you very much yeah. Yeah. yeah and i'll take this next question from chandu i'm going sequence uh, gokul from top to bottom yeah, go ahead, go ahead. yeah yeah chandu do you want to ask that question that you have uh, written here we have good 40 minutes to cover the question answers so please feel free keep an unmute you can talk yeah, hi. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, Chandu, can hear you. Yeah. So uh, the first question was, um, how does this solution do the classification of the documents, like mm -hmm. with respect to different formats um, and the languages, and will that support bilingual language like English um, and Arabic or English and the Spanish? So that was my first question. Okay. Uh, very first thing, I think both Gokul and I will pick up different pieces here. Uh, okay. Our capability right now is limited to English extraction. So we are only looking at one language. Uh, we are, as of now, building two things. I think it's Spanish and, and uh, Mandarin, so Chinese. Mm -hmm. The inherent capability within the platform, we do understand double byte characters. So that's by default there, which is kind of missing in certain other platforms. So we have that available. But as of now, it is English only. Uh, and then the classification of the document is a separate piece. So we can look at a document and say, you know, hey, whether this is an NDA, whether this is a resume, it's a mutual NDA or it's a single sided NDA. Uh, what kind of document is that? So you have the ability to train. And that's in some scenarios, that's all the business case there is where you're looking at. Can you just classify this? Because I've got a level zero desk, three people sitting there. I'm getting, I'm dealing with 10,000 communications coming through and all they're doing is which team it should go to. So we can very well do that, that part of, you know, classification to begin with. Google, do you want to add a couple of more things here? Yeah, actually uh, the classification part I'll take, right? So classification yeah. of documents with respect to formats. So it's, it's not a rule-based engine or it's not uh, like a, format, um, mm -hmm. uh, memorizing uh, the format in the model. So it's basically a semantic understanding, of read, literally, uh, yeah, we are training in AI that can read and understand documents. That means, you know, um, yeah, incoming document can be a completely a different format, a different way it is written, but uh, semantically it's same to the category A or category B. Yes, our system can categorize. So if you uh, if you meant by how it is done, yes, that's the the classification is done um, by uh, you know semantically understanding and you know by uh, contextually um, you know, getting complete picture about what it talks about and then doing the classification. Hmm. And then to do that, uh, if I have to connect, I'm not sure whether you you internally ask that two question together. The, the language models, what we have, the, uh, you know, the, all the, you know, uh, the pre-trained language models, it's uh, the sophisticated models, what we have so that we can deliver uh, the custom built domain specific model within a week or two is actually uh, uh, in, in English are well uh, developed in English. So we, we, to develop in other language, we need, you know, um, six to eight weeks. That's what I think Vikas also mentioned. So for any new language, so we are currently working for the two other language Likewise, so um, to read and understand your document properly, yes, we need uh, language models that uh, will take six to eight weeks for other language. Thanks, Vikas. Oh, Great. Thank you, Chatu. We're going to the uh, next question by, yes, Koku. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we have uh, uh, Manasvi, the next question. Okay, uh, the first question is like, uh, uh, does your but the system evaluate sarcastic statements and one more thing i want to ask like 
can the uh, test text uh, classification is based on a predefined rules set of rules mm -hmm. and can it uh, classify classify according to the rules set of rules okay okay all right so i'll take one part of it and google just add sarcastic sarcastic answer to your sarcastic question that you have here so we do sentiment analysis and i think the sarcastic uh, question really is very closely tied to social media so if you're looking at certain email the responses coming through or a media uh, you know page that you're managing and you've got sarcastic statements there sure we can do a rule based generation there we can also have the nlp component uh, from a sentiment analysis you know add that but kokul please do add some color to the base answer that i've given right now okay so what we give i mean uh, what my offering is not an ai model it's not like a trained ai model mm -hmm. uh, you 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 are getting started immediately right what we are giving you is a platform using which you can create your own custom ai model or models orchestrated together to get us ai solution in that way i mean we have we have we made it very simple super easy we, it's basically built for business people can do point and click annotation and get that uh, you know models so i mean i think vikas also mentioned about workshop where we will train you how to do that now if you want to i mean given a passage of content you want to identify whether it is sarcastic or you know proper or let's say aspect level sentiment whatever it can be you i mean not paragraph level sentiment or you know word level sentiment you you can define and you can train using our platform so basically we are giving you all the necessary building blocks or yeah, as a platform using which you can create the ai solution if you want to train uh, to identify sarcastic um, i mean you want to have a model that understands sarcastic statements yes you can develop using botmines platform we are happy to work with you to uh, do that but the simplest are can botmines well with sarcastic so that's something different it's not botmines as a platform gives you the ability to develop the ai models that can evaluate sarcastic statements okay Uh, actually, the sarcastic uh, one is the different one. The uh, next question was related to the um, based on the predefined uh, rule based. Uh, yeah, please. Yeah. Maybe. So yeah, I'll answer that. Uh, can mm -hmm. you repeat the question? Maybe I missed. Sorry, uh, Vikas. Here, can you help me? No, I have. I have the question. I'll, I'll answer that. Mm, I think uh, Manas mm -hmm. had mentioned that can we can we specify rules and can it work on the rule based evaluation classification? Right, Manas. I'm not looking for any. Uh, Uh, pre-defined sir uh, the um, uh, supervised model we are looking for unsupervised model yeah sure so like gokul mentioned you know what you are getting and i think one important piece is how we deploy our platform so it's a saas based platform deployed in your private cloud by your i mean your company's private cloud and what you're getting is the base ai models which are ready so think about this as microsoft excel that's what you're getting right so the question is can i can i make can i can i add things in excel can i create you know tables in excel all the answers to all those questions is yes because you've got all those things in addition to this i hate to say that but the comparison here is templates so but you know excel would have templates we got ai models so you have base ai models to offer you capabilities there so from that perspective you have the ability to specify and say you know what this is the condition this is the rule that i want you to go on and highlight and highlight the risk on the basis of this highlight a particular statement on the basis of this you provide a training and you can specify in that specific keywords as well that you can define so that's the ability uh, that our platform gives you manas uh let me explain uh, maybe sure. uh, i'm not able to explain you let's uh, let's take an example of uh, indian panel court okay Mm -hmm. have a set of uh, scenarios that in best best on this scenario you are going to be penalized with this uh, ipc right so we have a set of rules in that okay okay so you you want to define i mean instead of training in m1 model can we define a uh, business rules to classify right. is that correct absolutely yes that's yeah. available in our platform yeah yeah Um, yeah you can define that's the simplest thing you, you, you can get started immediately as well so where you have an interface where you can go and specify the rules and using which you can I mean, rule based model for example even uh, sometimes a yeah, document classification you want to do rule based extraction you want to use with the ai yes you can mix and match it's totally fine uh, in that case we will be more interested in the percentage of accuracy how in the initial stage then got it thank got you. it yeah. sure. thank you thank Perfect. you Okay, I'll take that uh, another question by Arvin. Uh, I'll uh, so 
how it how will how will it work for different domains do i need to do anything arvind you want to add more color to that you want to mute yourself you can explain uh, we i mean because covered a bit in the presentation and i can see one more question from you also hey this is arvind here so no i think it was uh, covered that uh, we can add more uh, domain data uh, to train the model so i think that part was covered and okay. maybe uh, you can address two other questions which i have uh, one okay. is uh, uh, microsoft cognitive search i, I think uh, they are kind of providing a similar solution so mm -hmm. how things are different that was number one number two is uh, uh, what kind of technology is being used here other than uh, your secret sauce right which i don't want you to say okay great thanks i um, uh, you are from i mean i think i missed your introduction you are from which organization i'm, I'm from stl technologies great okay so cognitive search uh, you know is direct i mean the quality of a search you moving away from you know index based uh, search to a ml model as a you know um, uh, ml model powered search so that you know uh, you can get a get better relevant results and all those stuff but the key thing is how well you can understand i mean how well you know about the document that powers i mean uh, the domain document what you have so the you know good understanding of the document is first step to give you to give better quality search results okay now what we are talking about the bot minds we are talking about document understanding ai bot minds is a document understanding ai that helps you to get uh you know extract the critical information or tag the information with more meta information like there is a word but it is a name or this is a company name this is the age or this is a contract start date end date you have to add more meta information so that the search result can be more i mean uh, relevant or even you can you can do that a uh, search in a better way so um the fundamental thing i mean the uh, what whoever offers my cognitive search the fundamental thing is Uh, you need a better document understanding so we we know what we do is we empower you to do that uh, uh, cognitive research. we do have a layer of cognitive research right in our platform where you know uh, for example you can have, uh, i mean one of our customer you know uses the 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 decker worth of documents you know contract documents they upload it they train the name model that extracts all the domain specific knowledge from in mean, information from the contract then now they are using a yeah, layer to do a, a beautiful search now not possible with any of the search component available so cognitive search first step to the cognitive service better document understanding that's what we we give you and uh, if we can work with you to develop that layer also that uh, top layer cognitive search work it's available uh, in a, in a shape and form right inside the botnet platform when you get a botnet platform you are getting cognitive search engine also so hope i answered that question and um on the cognitive search one more one more piece i want to add uh, because i think that's kind of a common question that uh, a document understanding is of course offered by the likes of microsoft ibm and google and so on and so forth again the challenge there is two twofold one um it is still you could either get everything that is written over there or you kind of need to go ahead and give a bit of training to say this is the information that needs to be extracted which does not need to be done with bot minds that's number one number two is any time that you are getting uh any of these solutions and i'm not you know putting anything against that but objectively you're basically sending your document out and sometimes that's a challenge you do not want the document to go out you want the document to stay uh and with private cloud with bot minds you essentially upload the document only when bot minds it does not even come to bot minds for processing because we deploy our ai engine within each and every private cloud that we deploy so essentially it stays within your within your premises within your premises of the private cloud the ai models that you develop also stay within that within that private cloud instance which means that they are private to you which is why we don't offer solutions we offer a platform for you to build your own ai models so that's something that i thought i'll just add koko uh, back to you on yeah, that thanks uh, vikas thanks gokul thanks everyone yeah. for the question okay so chandu we had uh, answered the question i think uh, the table data a quick answer yeah. i think we covered so table data without even co column headers uh, you know uh, is there inference that can be done you know by uh, by given i mean you will give examples uh, from the example if we can infer as a human if you can you know infer and extract yes our system can do that 
and uh, unwanted data from the table extraction is automatically eliminated the moment you, you start tagging and you start training your AI. What is relevant? What is what is the information you want to extract? So uh, table understanding AI, what we have is so first we end up to identify the relevant or wanted unwanted data. Next course in Mayu Pawanika. Uh, what happens? Okay, Mayu, you want to unmute? You want to ask the person if you are still. Yes. No, Ajit has to enable that. So Ajit Mayur is next. Mayur is not there, I guess. I'm just trying to okay, find let's, him. That's okay. Let's answer the question then. So what happens if a new structure of document comes up, which was not available while trialing? What would be the accuracy level? Okay. So mm -hmm. I'll I'll take that question. Right? So the we are not developing any template, right? So BotMines is a A first automation platform. It's completely different, um, radically different from the way uh, OCR or uh, the other um, ways of solving the document document extraction. So the concept of new structure comes in is more relevant to the template. Say I am creating, for example, typical AP accounts payable scenario. I am I trained for ten uh, ten vendors. Suddenly, eleventh vendor comes in, uh, my system breaks. I, uh, all the solutions ask, okay, give me two three samples for the eleventh vendor. We will give you. Uh, uh, I mean, our system. I mean, our model will start working. That's nothing but, yeah. Behind under the hood, a yeah, template is getting created. So, yeah, uh, the yeah, when new structure comes in, if the system not able to pick the value, let's say invoice number, it is available in the top right corner, but new, uh, you know, new template comes in, it is available in the bottom left. Still, the system should go and pick. So. Our system, how it happens the trip by training, we mean, you know, you are giving the semantic or, you know, contextual information about the fields of your interest. So it understands a lot other signals about the field. So even if you're uploading a document, it's completely not part of the template, I mean, not part of the training, our system still will go and extract the value because it reads and understands and then extracts. Now, the second part of the question is very relevant. What would be the accuracy level? Yes, the accuracy level will remain this, you know, remain the same. It should remain the same. The confidence score will go down. For example, you know, if it is already part of the training, the confidence may be 90, 90 percentage. The system now for the new, maybe, uh, you know, it will say, I'm confident 70 percentage. The moment you do, you know, uh, confirm, then the confidence will go high for, for the next incoming part. So this is important question. So the training, uh, this is the fundamental and important differentiation I mean, differentiating factor for Botman's platform when it comes to other ways of uh, solving this. So what you're developing is an AI model. You're not creating any templates, okay? So that, the, so that it's a more robust and more, um, what to say, uh, flexible. Okay. Uh, so Gokul, I'm gonna resume the remaining part of the workshop and the comparison, and then we'll come back to this uh, Q and A. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So a couple of things here. Um, so what kind of output or what kind of results can you expect with bot mines? And this is the kind of output that we've given uh, to some of the clients that we work with. And we are roughly a year and a half old in the market. Our technology and platform is uh, four and a half years mature. Uh, so technology is there, but we have some number of clients that we're working with. And we've seen significant amount of benefit. And why is this way more than RPA, if you may ask, is because RPA we are handling basically you know 10 minutes to a five minute AHT or 15 minute to a five minute processing time whereas in this case we're talking about an hour and a half spent on a document and that becoming a five minute so there is a significant amount of saving and capability that is available when it comes down to handling with documents and just as a comparison you know if you look at an RPA plus you know, other document understanding capabilities or solutions. This has been our experience with a variety of customers that have come in and they've been using all the other solutions and they, this is the information that we've gathered so far. So typically an ROI, you're looking at, you know, five to six months, we've been able to deliver, like I mentioned, a POC within just a week and a production ready system within just a couple of weeks time. So three to five weeks. So that's a very uh, fast way. Then coding expertise, when it comes down to your, uh, you know, typical RPA, which is the low code, no code, and that differentiation is reduced, you know, tremendously. It's a no code when it comes down to standard straight through processing, but none of the organizations always have straight through processing. There are certain nuances that you have to handle. And that's where having to write a code comes into play. And I'm sure all of you who have dealt with RPA have seen that. 
We don't have any place for you to write a code. It's some completely point and click, and that's something that is required. We are a vertically integrated platform, which means that everything is built to work with each other. Our RPA component, which is our last layer, is built to work with our AI models, which is built to work with our connectors, which all the other variety of different components, our table understanding, you know, our document AI, our, our web page AI, all of these things are vertically stacked so that everything works seamlessly with each other. So things don't really break. And then we, you do not need to train on a particular template. We have discussed a couple of times with the Q&A, couple of questions are there. New document comes in, what happens? Do you have to train? Typically with an RPA and other solutions, you would have to provide some bit of training there. But in this case, we would go ahead and do the extraction. Gokul pointed out, you know, both in terms of the accuracy as well as the confidence score. If it's a new document, because it's not been seen first time, uh, it's not been seen, it's been seen for the first time, the confidence on the prediction may be low, but the accuracy will still be there. And what hasn't been mentioned so far is we offer you with a transparent AI. What that means is you have the ability to look at what is the accuracy, what is the confidence score for my full model and for every single field that you have extracted. So if everything is showing you a 95, 95, and two of them are at 0% and your overall is at 50%, you know exactly why. And but that zero percent, you can go down and say, why is it zero percent or five percent? And you'll say, you know what, it only got two examples out of the hundred that he gave because these two fields never showed up in any of the other documents. So you know exactly what needs to be done, and that's the that's the transparent AI. And the last piece in terms of pricing is that you don't have to deal with you know bots and orchestrators and AI models and uh, you know Abbey licenses or any other you know platform there and whether it can it does have have a machine learning capability you have a different you know pricing structure there and then you have certain number of minimum committed number of pages so there's a different pricing structure there with us you have a single enterprise license there are no bots. There are no costs for your separate use cases. There are no separate charges for the AI models that you build. You can build as many models as you want. You can go ahead and use it for as many number of scenarios as you want. As a single license, the only thing that we measure is number of pages, right? So that's where we differ between you know, two of these uh, technologies, the questions that are there from an RPA perspective. So what's our value prop? One, we are a horizontal platform. Uh, that allows you to go ahead and use this platform for multiple different you know, verticals, functions within your organization. You have the ability to do rapid automation. You can get you know, first model out within a week's time and then push it to production. Uh, you can automate high value process because you're looking at a large documents, decisions, being able to understand the document like a human, you have that. And you also have end-to-end. -end. We're not just an OCR. We're not just looking at extracting information from SAN document, that's one of the capabilities. We have a whole lot of other capability when it comes down to extracting information from documents. So how do you get, uh, and there are questions about, do you have, you know, uh, I'll come to that. I think uh, Devendu had that question. Do you have community edition? Do you offer certain free? Do you have courses? All of that. So what we uh, have in front of you right now is a bot minds workshop. We do not have a free version. We do not have a community version. But what we are doing is we are setting up a workshop, which is an hour long workshop, where you will see how to train bot minds AI to get a solution done, to get a, one of the problems solved. At the end of that, we will provide you with access to our platform. That means you get the access to BotMinds platform to be able to continue with the training and create your own AI model. At the end of that, we'll have a second session within that workshop for the second hour where you can bring in and say, this is what I trained, here is the output that is there, and you will have access to the BotMinds uh, you know, platform for an entire of two weeks. Once you've done all, all of these activities, we will offer you a BotMinds foundation certificate as well. But that's the simplest of the way in which you as an individual can get the access. For a company, we offer free of charge proof, proof of concept, and that's a concept POC. We can build in, the access is given, training is given, and we generate the solution and we give that out to you. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this link within the chat, uh, but it's fairly simple. It's bit.ly, uh, and you can go ahead and scan the UR code as well, but I'll just push this out uh, on the chat as well. Oh, it's done. Yeah, it's done. Thank you. Um, and yeah, so please register here. We once based on the registrations, we will go ahead and announce a date uh, that may be a week or two down the line, most likely a Friday, most likely 3 to 4.30 p.m. kind of an activity, and we'll put you guys together 
uh, or if we have more registration, we'll run multiple workshops on the same day. That's what we've done you know, a week and a half ago. You will get the access and you will then have the ability to interact with the platform. Yeah, come, come right. as a team also in your enterprise, you can come with more people uh, yeah. as a team. You can uh, you know, solve a scenario in an hour. And one more question, I mean, I, I can see two, three questions on the same lines. Do you have any API interface to integrate? Yes, absolutely. We have, you know, yep. both, uh, you know, uh, input API, uh, you know, structured data, uh, output API, RESTful APIs you can integrate with your workflow or PPM. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we have 12 minutes on the time. Gokul, do you want to go back onto the Q&A? You've marked a couple of questions that you want to answer, starting yeah, with Anushka. Yeah, yeah. So At just this answer... point, I think you can just read the question and answer it for everybody's benefit to save yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Anushka asked about you know, use cases for aviation industry. Uh, so that's you know as I as we mentioned you know bot mines as a platform as is on the like this can be yeah, uh, same platform can be used to create industry specific solutions. So use cases for in the aviation industry. So uh, for example, I think uh, the technical documentation you know or uh, let's say you have um, uh, yes yes these th yes, thousand B uh, formats. Uh, you know, you have documentation, you have to quickly tag or create an XML file for that. You have to structure that uh, uh, existing documents. Yes, we have done uh, work on that. Likewise, you know, uh, uh, engineering uh, uh, documents, extracting information and structuring it so that, you know, SOPs can be created. So a uh, few scenarios done, but I will be you know, very frank, aviation is not that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, fast in terms of intelligent automation, but happy yeah. to discuss with the honest guy. Uh, we yeah. have just sent out a use case that we have on the airlines uh, competitive intelligence. So I've sent that one out. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Now, Arvind. Um, Arvind uh, okay. I think uh, we already answered secret sauce. Yeah. What is the database? Just software? mark it off, Google, so that yeah, we yeah. can so, go one by one. Yeah. I think the secret sauce, it's like uh, we, we are chasing the research happening in the intersection of deep learning and NLP. Something like you know very well in the last one year, it's something like a lot of breakthroughs. Yeah, we're so, so proud about on top of all the uh, recent breakthroughs. In the I think, Gokul, the question is beyond the secret sauce. So the question really was beyond the secret sauce, what have we got? Oh, so, okay. So it's a vertical integration, I will say. For example, you know, uh, you, to get an uh, AI model, working AI model within weeks, that means, you know, you need, um, you know, a lot of, I mean, say, data scientists or, you know, subject matter experts or, uh, documents from a uh, you know, lot of documents. So we, I mean, uh, we bring all together. The vertical integration mm -hmm. nature is what I will say makes it possible. And a um, lot of I mean, ready-made blocks like uh, pre-processing of your documents. Let's say uh, people talked about poor quality scanned images, right? They're skewed, distorted. All those things are readily available as a component you can use to create a solution. So yeah. that's something uh, I'll call that as. Yeah, and basically it's an Azure-based um, uh, SaaS platform. So we um, use Azure's infrastructure uh, capability and we have microservices built on top of that, uh, which is how we provide you with the solution. So there's one question from Yatin. I'm gonna take two questions here. Second question Yatin has is, is BotMinds available on cloud or on-prem as well? Uh, we are available on cloud. Uh, we have we offer two types of cloud. One is BotMind Shared. Typically, we use that for proof of concept or a very small scale deployment. And then we offer private cloud, which is what we set up on your behalf. It's a pass through for, for you, but it is a private cloud instance for you. We also have certain components of on-prem available, but we haven't really finished that. Uh, we are 80% ready there. And the reason we haven't finished is because nobody's kind of asked us to deploy that. And we'll go ahead and deploy as and when somebody really wants it. Second question that Yatin has is, what is the accuracy while reading very low quality scan PDFs? Uh, so very low quality, I mean, basically we need a 300 DPI, you know, just as a standard OCR there, because OCR is one of the components that we have. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, we've dealt with documents with a lot of noise handwritten on top of it. Uh, documents that have come from WhatsApp scan, you know, we've done death claims where information, you know, is the documents of a passbook and a certificate have been scanned. They're slightly skewed, slightly twisted, not very clean. So we are still able to extract that. The way it changes really is that we then look at a lot more uh, number of examples to be able to extract the information from anything low quality. But low quality becomes very, very subjective. It depends upon how bad the quality is and we can judge and do on the basis of that. 
Um, next question is from Devendu. I think I've covered quite a few. So do you have community version? No, we don't, but we've got the workshop here. Uh, do we have some courses to get trained? Again, that's the workshop. What is the license model for bot mines? Is it per page charge model? Yes, we have per page only. That's a single one. We offer multiple tiers. It starts from 10,000 pages per month capacity, goes all the way up to 200,000 pages per month, but that's a subscription model that is available. What is the average time to train for a new template? We do not train on the basis of templates. So very key thing, we do not train on where the information is, which is how typically you train an OCR. You basically go ahead and say, you know, look at this place, somewhere around here is where you would find the information. We train what the information looks like. So if this information from here, the what will you get, goes from page number, whatever, 35 to page number 350, we'll still go ahead and extract that. So we don't really train on a template basis. At the same time, when we are providing the training, our AI engine at the back is learning about the surrounding of the things on how the how is it written, what are the other stuff. If I go ahead and look at current assets, which table does it belong to, et cetera, et cetera. So from that perspective, if you send completely new, our AI will go ahead and attempt to extract that, like we touched upon earlier, the confidence score and the accuracy score, maybe low in confidence if we have if we get a document that we've never seen before. But the ability to correct that is exactly what you show me, saw me do in the 2.4 billions to a 2.4 billion. That's the effort that you're looking at to specify. Minimum number of documents that can be passed for the training at a time. You basically can upload as many documents as you want. You can connect us to a pipe, to a data lake. We can pick up the information. The minimum that we're looking at is 100 plus document. We break this down into a 70-30. We train with 70, then we test it with 30, and then we allow uh, you to go ahead and test that others. How easy or difficult is it to integrate with the existing RPA tools? Uh, early on, we were listed as UiPath's technical uh, technical partner to provide document understanding. We are working to getting us listed on all the marketplaces that all the RPA vendors that are there. So going forward in just you know a couple of, uh, I, I don't want to give any timeline there, but going forward, you basically would have the ability to just download a component and have the integration done, but it's fairly simple. We will configure that and we'll get that to you. The ICR piece is very much related to the handwritten recognition. That's something that is coming in our next version there. Then we have question from Tahir. Uh, can we extract document as a flat structured data without you know, applying any machine learning? And how does it work on an on-prem data? Does it require to upload? Yes, you would need to upload the data, uh, but you're basically uploading the data to your own private cloud. It does not come to bot mines. It does not go anywhere else, but the data obviously needs to be uploaded. On a flat structured data, you basically, if you're looking at a flat structured data as a particular document, that's perfectly fine. The ML gets applied from our side. But if you're looking at just as an Excel source, uh, you know, as a CSV file, as a flat file, then I'm not sure why you would want to extract information because you already have that as a structured uh, information that is there. Okay, moving forward, can bot mines, uh, Suresh Bura asked the question, can bot mines extract data from scanned PDF and images? Absolutely, we can, we can extract that. Um, if time permitted, I would have liked to show you a couple of other things as well, where we are connecting to the mailboxes, we are extracting information. These are scanned images and scanned documents. No problem, we can extract from there. How the exceptions are handled in bot mines, if not, what is the extracted properly? Uh, any specific features that we have in a bot mines to handle separately? So I think the question, if I understood correctly, is handling exception. So the exceptions could be in multiple ways. You're looking at a risk analysis and in the risk, you could specify if the value for a particular contract is within this range, I'm okay. If it is beyond this particular range, let's say 100 days and 30 days, you're okay with 30 days, you're not okay with 100 days. Contract comes to you, says 100 days there, bot mines will flag that up, highlight it with red, and hand it over with the workflow to your subsequent team and say, somebody needs to look at it. So you don't really have to look at hundreds and hundreds of communication coming through. You only need to look at the information that has been highlighted uh, from bot mines. But I think uh, the question most um, if yeah. not extracted properly, yes, mm -hmm. if not extracted properly, some you know, exceptions, mistakes, yes, you can go and correct. I think because also showcased how you can edit. Yeah. So yeah. right in our interface, it's an intuitive interface. You can do uh, you know, corrections, uh, edit, uh, and you can train the system. That beauty is it learns whatever edits, whatever corrections you are doing, system learns and the model will get improved. Yeah. Thanks, Google. Yeah, 
Uh, next question is uh, Chandu. Chandu has asked, can we extract complete documents without field mappings? That's our that's our end state that we're looking at, is that you just upload the document and we tell you everything that is there. Um, but that's not where we are. Uh, and maybe that's going to be a far, far away for, for any use case and scenario. You are looking at saying that, okay, I've got this whole large document, but this is the 15, 20, 200 pieces of information that I want to extract. You will still specify what that information is, what that looks like as part of the training. Just uploading, and this is typically done with a solution, point solution, which says, here is the invoice solution. Upload any invoice document, will extract all the information. But that's just limited. But we are a horizontal platform. You can upload any type of document and train for anything. That's why we don't offer a complete document without a field extraction. Yeah. So the, the, the field mapping is a critical field uh, point here. So it is not like a typical OCR kind of bound, created bound, I mean, creating a bounded box and saying this is mapping that, no. So the mapping is point and click training. We call that annotation. You open yeah. a document, you say, this is what the information I'm interested. So that is the mapping. Yes, you're doing a field mapping. It is not like, uh, uh, you know, uh, where it is as because uh, you know beautifully would it's not where it is it's what what you want what what it is it can be in 10 page for one document it can be in 100 page for another document our system going to learn about it how it is presented what other things nearby all those stuff so that's what the, the mapping here yeah that's a question from narayanan uh i'm going to the next question from uh Nachipan. what is your licensing model our licensing model has uh is only one part it is per page we do not restrict you with number of AI models uh, or the number of scenarios or the customers that you run in. It's only per page. We have a per page variety of different tiers available starting from 10,000 pages per month all the way to 200,000 pages per month. And depending upon what your requirement is, the license model is available there. Tahir is the last question that I have. How it deals with mixed data types, statistical as well as descriptive, both in the same document. Will it do NLP on descriptive data while extraction? I'll cover one part of that. So the financial data extraction example that I had showed, where you have table, which is written there, where you've got the text, which is written there. That's the actual use case example where a single document may have multiple data types sitting over there. There will be text, there'll be table, there'll be graphs, and all our AIs work in tandem. And that's where our AI uh, integration and AI Studio comes into play, that it goes ahead and knows which one needs to kick in and where the information needs to be extracted. So that's something that is done specifically over there. NLP can kick in essentially when you're doing the extraction, you know, as well to provide the descriptive data while extracting. Now we're not expanding on that, but we are inferring what are the different ways in which a particular information is written. Gokul, do you want to add a couple of more things here? Yeah, That's I think ex question. extraction from the extraction from descriptive data is the core of our capability. So, uh, you know, understanding and you know, uh, we, we are doing NLP and the descriptive data. That's what our core. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a question good. in yeah. chat we have from Nachi says, does the page count include training pages as well? No, it does not. You give the training, we set it up, then we give it to you, and that's where the page number, uh, you know, page count starts getting there. All right, so I think that's we have answered all the questions. You've got our, you got, you know, hello at botminds.ai or vikas at botminds.ai. Feel free to drop a line and, uh, you know, ask any more questions that you may have. I'm going to go it and give it over to Gokul for you to close Gokul. We are one minute over, but go ahead and summarize um, and give everybody some confidence about our platform further down. Oh, great, great. I think, yeah, it's great um, interactive session. And first of all, thanks, Poonam, for setting the con uh, you know, context for this um, webinar. Uh, I, I can see um, a lot of interaction because of you know, the, the direction you said very early. And great questions from the participants. And, um, you know, uh, most mostly around, you know, uh, the, I mean, it, 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 it says how, uh, struggling or how difficult it is to automate a scenario where unstructured documents involved. What you know, Poonam also mentioned in the uh, keynote. So that's exactly what we are hearing, hearing uh, with, from our customers again and again. Yes, you know, we, uh, uh, we solved some scenarios, we delivered uh, results to our customers, but it's all about, I mean, it's all on the structured or semi-structured, but the meaty, Critical processes our customers are you know, we are trying to automate are all unstructured data. Uh, we need help. So what we are introducing now to you is a powerful platform, horizontal platform, 
it's easy to use you, know, you can get trained register to a workshop they're happy to walk you through how to use you will get trained using which you can create solutions to your customers or to your to bring efficiency in your automation so uh, you know uh, go ahead and register and i'd love to uh, see you all in the workshop and uh, and also uh, happy to collaborate with you to solve some of the interesting you know uh, exciting slides so with that i'd like to um, uh, close and um, yeah great great to have you all here thank awesome. you Thank, thank you, you Poonam. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for setting up the context. Uh, Poonam, do you want to you, you want to add any closing closing words from your side? Yeah, please. Poonam, you're on mute right now. Yeah. yeah. So thank you very much, uh, Vikas and Gopal. That was a really um, great demonstration, and um, I would and I think we all would love to hear a little bit more about uh, you know what uh, what men can do for us and. Uh, I think every organization has a lot of different scenarios and different uh, places where we could, you know, utilize uh, bot minds. So I'm sure all of you would, uh, you know, be a part of the uh, the, uh, the presentation or what what they say, going to set uh, after a week or so, and then you know look at some used cases and make some models. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you are going to attend. So thank you very much for Kaas and Gopal. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. And thanks, UBS. Uh, anything you want to add, Ajit? Yeah. For closing. Thank you, Poonam. Thank you very much. Thanks for the closing thank remarks. You, thanks, Gopal. Thanks, Vikas. Thank you very much, everyone. And with thanks, that, UBS. I would like to thank all the participants as well for joining in for today's session and making it a successful one. Still, if you have any queries, questions, you have or you already have the details for Gokul and Vikas, or you can write down to UBS Forums team as well. We will connect you to the BotMinds team accordingly. With that note, thank you very much, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a great day. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Good day. Bye-bye.